Thank you.
We are gathered here today as a college in body and soul because of your kind gifts of life. We have gathered to celebrate a monumental achievement of our college, 20 years of existence. A journey of two decades in the life of an institution is no mean an achievement, though it could be described as a relatively short time. But when we just oppose this relatively short period of our existence with the sources chopped by the college in producing so many specialists and consultants for our mother country, Ghana, and the sub-region as a whole, that we are left with no doubt in our minds that this has been the finger of God in our operations. The achievement in hard infrastructure, including an identifiable premises of our own, this edifice that houses this conference. The achievement in soft infrastructure and digitalization, such as the computer-based tests, the guitar, digital logbook called ePort, the e-resources, and lately, the introduction of online lecture delivery that reaches out to hundreds of residents in various trading institutions in real time, and the innovations of decentralized residency training, all these within 20 years cannot be by the doing of man. We can only ascribe these great achievements to a superior hand and the favor from a father above. For these and many more, we ascribe praise and adoration to your name. Riding on the wheels of great and famous men who have contributed their quota to the birth and the growth of this great college of ours, we stand on the shoulders of these giants named in his story to continue to look ahead in hope for a greater and a brighter future. What shall we render unto you, our Lord, for all these monumental achievements? We praise and lift your name higher and higher, for it has all been by your grace. We commit all the programs lined up for the 20th anniversary celebration into your hands. For those that have taken place successfully, we say we are grateful. And for those that are yet to take place, we, we ask for your guidance and protection. And for today's opening, official opening ceremony, we commit every aspect into your hands. Guide us to a successful end. Let your beauty be seen in every aspect of the celebration. We pray for your favor and protection for all the members and fellows, both old and new. And for all our invited guests who have traveled far and near to join in our celebration. Grant each of us Jenny messes back to our various places when it is all done. We also commit the years ahead of the college into our powerful hands. Let heaven continue to smile on us and strengthen our collaborations with all partners. We pray for the governing council of the college, the management led by the rector and the vice rector and all the staff of the college, that we grant them wisdom in their daily deliberations and favor Bless our collective efforts, and with your grace abiding, let the impact of our college on the health delivery in the country and the sub-region be palpably felt. Above all these, bless our country, Ghana, and the West African sub-region. This and many more we ask in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, thank you very much uh, for this consultant prayer. <laughs> Can we turn to page 94 of our um, brochures? Uh, we'll take the song of praise and prayer. Mother's Hymn Book 896.
I would like to welcome you to the 20th anniversary induction of fellow ceremony during this 20th anniversary celebration of the Ghana College of Physicians and Surgeons. Yesterday, we had um, a packed auditorium where we had an induction for members and then the diplomates in anesthesia who graduated this year. We will now proceed with our program and I will invite the, somebody to do an assignment. Now, this person is a pioneer of pioneers. He was the first, among the first cohort of graduates from University of Ghana Medical School. He plies his trade among a set of doctors whose name cannot be mentioned correctly without a rehearsal. They assassinate patients and resurrect them after a few hours and have complex ways of eliminating pain in all areas of the body. He is so good that he became a professor in that field. He is a past president of the Ghana Medical Association, a past member of council of the Ghana College of Physicians and Surgeons. He became an octogenarian two years ago, yet he walks with a spring in his step. He is a current chair of the Council of Ghana College of Physicians and Surgeons. Ladies and gentlemen, to declare the graduation ceremony open, let us welcome Professor Yao Edu Jemfi. Good morning and welcome. We'll keep it straight, forward, and short. I, Professor Yao Edujemfi, by the authority vested in me as chairman of the Council of the Ghana College of Physicians and Surgeons, declare this assembly opened for the purpose of ad admission of fellows and members of the Ghana College of Physicians and Surgeons. Thank you very much, Prof. We will move quickly to somebody who will welcome us. He is a distinguished gentleman with work experience in Accra, Sunyani, London, Middlesbrough, and Cape Coast. He is an alumnus of the University of Ghana Medical School. Now, he plied his trade among doctors who are not satisfied with just the outward look of human beings, but navigate the bowels and internal organs of what God has created to bring healing to their clients. He cuts, he sews, he repairs, and he connects body organs to the professorial level. He is a calm speaker who picks his words carefully and deliberately. He is a dedicated fellow of this college and currently the college president. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the podium Professor Samuel Akobo Yao Debra to give us the welcome address. Thank you, Vice Rector, for those very kind introduction. Chairman of Council, Professor Yao Odijen Fi. I know the Minister of Health is on his way, so I will also acknowledge him, although he's not here yet. Guest of Honor, Professor Paul Nyame, College Lecturer, Professor Nchecho, Vice President, Rector and Vice Rector, representatives from our sister colleges, both physically present and virtual, chairman and secretary of faculties, other officers of the college present and past, proud graduates, press and media call, distinguished ladies 
and gentlemen. I'm absolutely delighted to welcome you to this memorable event this afternoon. Well, this morning, really. This particular fellowship induction ceremony is indeed special as it comes as one of the activities climaxing our 20th anniversary of the college's inception. The echoes of this morning event will resonate particularly well, firstly, the graduates, secondly, family, friends, and country at large, and finally, teachers, trainers, and their supporting staff. To the graduates, you are now entitled to be called fellows of the college. This means you are consultant eligible and have arrived at the summit of your discipline. But while this confers on you certain honors and privileges, I exhort you to remain humble, steady, firm in principle, and limit your desires in all stations of life so that you rise to eminence by merit and live ever more respected. You all have the scientific knowledge of an Einstein, but this should be tempered by the common sense and supreme wisdom of Solomon. These are judgment calls that your new station in life will demand of you every day. Secondly, because of the current admittedly difficult times, there will be the ever-present Leo to join the trail to greener pastures. If the motive for going is purely monetary, then I exhort you to think about the fact that Government in its all current difficulties has enabled your training and you owe it to the country to remain. Also in the end, taking your entire family circumstances into consideration, I can guarantee you, you will make more money at home than abroad. I said, take it from me, it's true. <laughs> As a doctor, I do not expect you to be mega rich, but you will never starve. You have indeed become fellows of the college in the 20th year of its inception, and no doubt have been part of the anniversary of program from the beginning of the year. You have heard of the difficult generation and birth and the challenges in the early years. And also you have heard of its achievements and successes. So we salute the founding fathers for their bravery and ability to stick to it. The first 20 years have been largely about our first mandate, that is to produce more specialists geographically distributed over the entire country. And this is rightly so. However, advancing knowledge and leveraging of technology to medicine demand that we train socialists at a faster pace. And we are achieving this by decentralizing the fellowships and also bringing 
uh, run through subspecialty training to family and friends. Medical training is particularly arduous and demands unceasing support from family and friends. So on behalf of the graduates, let me thank you for being there when needed. Finally, to faculty, a very special thank you for your mentorship, teaching and training, and professionalism. You are always the unsung heroes that keep the system afloat. 20 years marked the transition into adulthood and guided by the guided by and leveraging on the vision of our founding fathers and 20 years of excellent postgraduate training, we can now begin to address the other challenges of our Mondays, which will include the operationalization of the Association of Fellows. I expect this to proceed in an accelerated evolutionary manner. This wind of change is being blown by the synergism that for the first time in this country, all major stakeholders in the health are speaking with one voice. Indeed, there is nothing so powerful as an idea whose time has come. May your youthful enthusiasm and ideas catalyze the renaissance whilst keeping faith with the vision and legacy of our founding fathers. Congratulations and I wish you well. Oh, please, this club, uh, it's not good enough for our president. Thank you. So in case you may not have noticed, the program is on page 115. Um, and then there are several goodwill messages from page 63 to page 69. There's a particular one that I wrote, so maybe you want to look at it before you go. Um, but out of that, we've selected a few. We'll have fraternal messages from a few of our sister colleges and stakeholders. But before we proceed, I think that we have about seven or eight people coming up to speak. And to cut short the protocol, I'm going to establish a protocol for this program. So when you come up, you don't have to establish a fresh protocol. So our protocol for today, Honorable Minister, Chairman of Council, members of council of the Ghana College of Physicians and Surgeons, college president, vice president division of physicians, vice president division of surgeons, the rector, vice rector, guest of honor, college lecturer, past college presidents, past rectors of the Ghana College of Physicians and Surgeons, past college officers, representatives of sister colleges, representatives of stakeholders of the college, members of the academic board of the college, members of faculty boards of the college, representatives of the media, fellows of the college, members of the college, graduates, invited guests, ladies and gentlemen. So subsequently, please refer to this protocol. Thank you very much. Our next speaker is Anakora and an alumnus of the University of Ghana Medical School. He has a voice that greets you with good morning, even when he's three rooms away from you. He settled for life in the female pelvis as they prevent, present to the hospital, but he was not satisfied. He ventured into female pelvic interests in Kolegono and other districts in Ghana. Again, he was not satisfied. Then he became a pelvic doctor in public health to train public health professionals at the University of Ghana. Again, he was not satisfied. 
Then he became the tallest rector in the history of the Ghana College of Physicians and Surgeons. So the question is, is he satisfied? Ladies and gentlemen, let us welcome Professor Richard Mawena Kofi Adano to deliver the rector's address. Hey, fraternal messages. Okay. I'm too excited for my boss. We'll start with um, Ghana College of Nurses and Midwives. Thank you. <laughs> Ghana College of Nurses and Midwives. Please, let's clap until she collects the microphone. Thank you. Keep clapping. Thank you. So I'm standing on the established protocol. It's a, it's a pleasure for the Ghana College of Nurses and Midwives to join the College of Physicians and Surgeons this morning to celebrate its 20th anniversary and also the annual general and scientific meeting. Over the past 20 years, the College of Physicians and Surgeons has trained many specialists in Ghana and beyond and contributed significantly to improve health systems and outcomes. I congratulate the past and present leadership of the college for the vision for the college and the unique role they have played in the postgraduate training of doctors. Many years ago, were just familiar with the West African College of Physicians and of Surgeons. And they were the main avenues for specialization within the sub-region. Um, so the establishment of the College of Physicians and Surgeons um, has helped to improve our health outcomes. And this momentous occasion, marking the two decades of your dedication, excellence, and remarkable contribution to the medical profession in Ghana is celebrated. Congratulations. <clears throat> Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the Ghana College of Nurses and Midwives, also a specialist institution mandated to train specialist nurses and midwives to improve healthcare delivery in Ghana. Our college has positioned itself to be a reputable institution and a center of excellence in the training of specialist nurses within Ghana and the West African sub-region. In doing this, the College of Nurses and Midwives is committed to building the capacity of its residents, members, and fellows in research and scholarship, which we have done in the past 10 years. This, however, has been through the support of some members of the Ghana College of Physicians and Surgeons who serve in diverse ways as educators and clinical facilitators for the residents of the Ghana College of Nurses and Midwives. The College of Nurses and Midwives appreciates the support very much. Uh, the work of the doctor, nurse, midwife, and other health professionals is complementary, and we acknowledge what the Ghana College of Physicians and Surgeons has been doing. As team members in the healthcare industry, we also acknowledge the critical role of the physician and surgeon in our society. Your tireless efforts, commitment to patient care, and continuous pursuit of medical advancements have undoubtedly enriched the lives of countless individuals and families. These efforts have also empowered and strengthened communities to take appropriate actions towards health. For the team of two decades of postgraduate medical training in Ghana, echoes how far the College of Physicians and Surgeons has come for which its contributions are celebrated. The migration of health professionals from Ghana to more advanced and better endowed nations poses challenges to quality healthcare delivery. It therefore requires that members of the college put in the additional effort 
in knowledge and skills transfer to ensure we maintain the standard of quality care required. The collaboration between the College of Physicians and Surgeons and the College of Nurses and Midwives has been pivotal in promoting interdisciplinary cooperation. And like your college, the College of Nurses and Midwives is expanding its training sites and has been engaged in identifying this to ensure quality specialist training. We wish to assure you of our support and collaboration as our country positions itself to achieve universal health coverage. In addition to skills training, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the Ghana College of Nurses and Midwives looks forward to working with the College of Physicians and Surgeons in the area of research to maximize the gains of collaborative and multidisciplinary research. On behalf of the Ghana College of Nurses and Midwives, I extend our warmest congratulations to the newly qualified fellows and wish you a fruitful AGSM. Thank you. We will now invite the rector of the Ghana College of Pharmacists to give a fraternal message. Please, a stronger clap, please. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Chair, Professor Chair, as directed, I will stand on existing protocols. The Ghana College of Pharmacists wishes to extend its warm congratulations and best wishes to the Ghana College of Physicians and Surgeons on the occasion of its 20th anniversary. 20 years of postgraduate medical training in this country is no mean achievement. On this momentous occasion, we salute the gallant past and present leadership of the college, the success and impact of the specialists who have gone through your institution is very visible. With the migration of healthcare away from generalist to more specialist care, the role of specialist medical training cannot be overemphasized. At the Ghana College of Pharmacists, we are also very proud of the collaboration between our institutions and envisage a more fruitful partnership over the next decades towards achieving universal health coverage. As you celebrate two decades of training specialists and seek to improve your services upon rigorous assessment, we wish you best of luck in your future endeavors. We look forward to the outcomes of your deliberations during this AGSM and throughout your activities for your celebrations, which we believe will strengthen the training of specialist healthcare practitioners even further. On my own behalf, and on behalf of the Governing Council, the Academic Board, faculty, staff, and all members of the Ghana College of Pharmacists, I congratulate you once again on 20 years of excellent healthcare service delivery in Ghana and beyond. Ayeko, long live specialist training, long live postgraduate health colleges in Ghana. Long live Ghana. Thank you. We will now receive the Secretary General of the West African College of Physicians to deliver a fraternal message. A round of applause, please. Uh, 
I will also stand on the existing protocol. Uh, but before I start, I want to tell you that um, I came from very far. And as you can guess, um, I'm going to speak not English, but a mix of English and French. So it may sound English, but the background will probably be French. So I, I want to warn you before I start. I'm Abdul Prit Washinu from Benin Republic. I'm the Secretary General of the West African College of Physicians. And I bring you warm greetings, greetings from the WACP. Our President, Dr. Rose McCauley, apologizes for not being with you on this special occasion due to reasons beyond her control. So she asked me to deliver her message. But before I deliver the message, I would like to say on a personal note how delighted I am to be with you in Accra. My presence here fills me with emotion. Since it was here in Accra just over a year ago that I was officially installed as SG of the WHCP. Thank you. I thank God for his mercy and thank all the fellows and members of the Ghana chapter and the staff for their support in ensuring that we are on top of this exalting mission entrusted to us. Thank you, Medase. <laughs> I'm now going to deliver the message from our president. It is my great pleasure to extend warm congratulations to the Ghana College of Physicians and Surgeons on the occasion of this 28th anniversary. The milestone is, this milestone is a testament of the dedication, hard work, commitment of the Ghana College of Physicians and Surgeons in providing exceptional postgraduate medical training in Ghana. Under the theme, two decades of postgraduate medical training in Ghana, this event not only commemorates the achievements of the past, but also paves the way for a future of continued growth, excellence, and innovation in medical education. Over the years, the Ghana College of Physicians and Surgeons has played a pivotal role in shaping the healthcare landscape in Ghana, producing highly skilled physicians and surgeons who have made significant contributions to the well-being of the Ghanaian people. I commend the leadership, faculty, and staff of the Ghana College of Physicians and Surgeons for their unwavering dedication to advancing medical education and improving healthcare outcomes. Our colleges are linked and our collaboration is strong, not only through the fellows and members we shared, but also through our consultations on issues of importance to the health of our people in the sub-region. I hope that our collaboration will continue and even be intensified for the benefit of our populations, fellows, members, and residents. To the new fellows being inducted today, Congratulations on this significant achievement. As you join the esteemed ranks of the Ghana College, I encourage you to uphold the highest standard of medical practice, compassionate patient care, and lifelong learning. Your expertise and dedication will indubitably contribute to the betterment of healthcare in, in Ghana and beyond. At this point, I would like to appeal to you all, in this context of brain drain, to say, don't go away. <laughs> There's so much to be done in our own countries. And as long as we are willing to give it our all, we can succeed, you can succeed in Ghana. This Japa syndrome is so worrying for us at WACP that we have made it one of our four thematic areas in our new strategy plan 2024-2028, 20, 
which we launched a few weeks ago at our AGSM in Lome. And the main theme of that AGSM was incidentally on health workforce migration and impact on SDGs in the sub-region. We hope to collaborate with all stakeholders in the sub-region, including Ghana College of Physicians and Surgeons to fight this Jakba pandemic. On behalf of the West African College of Physicians, I extend our heartfelt congratulations one again, once again to the Ghana College of Physicians and Surgeons on this auspicious occasion. May the next two decades be filled with ever greater accomplishments, collaborations, and advancements in medical education. Thank you. Merci. Obrigado. Medasi. Uh, please, do we have a representative from West African College of Surgeons? All right. So we'll receive the uh, representative from the National Postgraduate Medical College of Nigeria. Please, if you see the color of the gown, you have to clap. It's a very powerful red one. Chairman of Council, the President of the College and Officers of the College of Ghana College of Physicians and Surgeons. I bring you warm and fraternal greetings from the Governing Board, Senate, and Fellows of the National Postgraduate Medical College of Nigeria. We watch with admiration the tremendous progress your college has made over the past two decades. We are proud of your contributions to the development of specialist manpower in the region and the contributions this make, makes to health development and the health status of the good people of Ghana. Thank you for inviting our college as you mark your 20th anniversary. The theme of, the, of your annual general scientific meeting on this occasion, two decades of postgraduate medical education medical training in Ghana is quite apt and affords you the opportunity of self-appraisal and repositioning for even greater achievements. We in Nigeria wish you every success, knowing fully well that your success is also our success. Diseases do not respect boundaries and efforts in one country is in the interest of all countries in the region. While the fact that the products of our medical schools and postgraduate medical educational institutions are in high demand is a testimony of the quality of manpower that we are producing, but this migration of skilled manpower from our region is a threat to our health systems. And colleges such as ours must fashion out strategies to train more and encourage governments to put in place mechanisms that will encourage our skilled manpower to stay and serve our people. It's not sufficient to ask them not to go, but we must put in place the enabling environment that will ensure that they also stay because there are push and pull factors. In our joint quest to produce high quality training for medical and dental specialists, the National Postgraduate Medical College of Nigeria currently has advanced simulation training centers and equipment, which are also available to our sister colleges, including the Ghana College of Physicians and Surgeons. I have previously and will continue to appreciate the maximum cooperation and continued support of the Ghana College of Physicians and Surgeons in the meeting of sister colleges in the Anglophone countries of the West Africa sub-region, which is aimed at enhancing postgraduate medical training in the region. 
May your institution continue to flourish, and may your trainees and faculties find the strength and inspiration to carry the torch of medical excellence forward. Long live the Ghana College of Physicians and Surgeons. Long live the Republic of Ghana. God bless us all. Thank you. We have apologies from the Colleges of Medicine of South Africa, and so we will not proceed in that direction. So, MOH Kwa, um, you are being called slightly earlier than usual, so kindly give us a musical interlude.
Good morning, everyone. And um, it's it's a joyous occasion, so let's let's lighten up a bit and let's let's smile, let's let's relax, let's be happy. Otherwise, I just won't read the speech. <laughs> Honourable Deputy Minister of Health, Chairman of the Council of Ghana College of Physicians and Surgeons, uh, special guest of honour, college lecturer, members of the College Council, President of Ghana College of Physicians and Surgeons. Vice President of Ghana College of Physicians and Surgeons, Vice Rector, Faculty Chairs and Secretaries here present, other officers of the college, past presidents and rectors of the college, representatives of sister colleges, invited guests, our graduating doctors, friends from the media, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the management of Ghana College of Physicians and Surgeons, I also welcome you to our 20th Annual General and Scientific Meeting and specifically to this ceremony for the admission of newly qualified fellows. This year's ceremony is special in two regards. It is a 20th anniversary induction ceremony, and it is the first ceremony which is completely devoted to the induction of fellows. There was an induction ceremony for new members and diplomats of the college yesterday. The number of graduating members and fellows has grown to such a level that we have had to do two ceremonies on one day for the past two years. And we have finally settled on this format where we have separate ceremonies for members and fellows. This year, we are admitting 335 members and fellows into the college. This is made up of 247 members, 40 fellows by election, and 48 fellows by examination. In addition to these are 25 diplomates of the Faculty of Anesthesia. In today's ceremony, we are also recognizing the efforts of some fellows of the college who have undertaken post-fellowship training and will be awarded post-fellowship diplomas. The numbers of doctors admitted into residency training has continued to increase. And this year, after our admissions, we took in 540 people for membership training and 218 for fellowship training. This is the highest admission intake in the history of the college. This increase in numbers, though encouraging, is not without challenges. The challenges of overcrowding in our major training centers and coordination of rotations that trainees need to take outside their main training centers mean that there's a need for us to re-examine and improve all our training administrative procedures. We successfully held our membership and fellowship examinations in March and September of this year. We had a total of 1,037 candidates sitting for the examinations and 825 passing, giving an overall pass rate of 86%. The pass rates were 75% at the primary level, 87% at the membership level, and 81% at the fellowship level. We inaugurated the Faculty of Neurosurgery in the first quarter of the year and they had their first primary examination in September with the first intake of direct neurosurgery trainees starting the fellowship in neurosurgery program last month. This year saw the introduction of two intakes for fellowship training. Our entry dates for fellowship training are now July 1st and January 1st. This modification in our admission procedures was in response to feedback on the relatively long wait by some doctors to start fellowship training which leads them to, to consider enrollment in other colleges. This change in our admission procedure led to a 56% increase in intake at the fellowship level this year over the previous year, compared to a 21% increase at the membership level. So this suggests that we probably did something right, addressing pressing needs in this area. So when we take all this year's numbers together, the college has graduated a total of 1,937 members, 248 fellows, and 25 diplomates since the inception in 2003. Now these increasing numbers and the national needs have led us to explore ways of cont containing the numbers 
and expanding our training while still maintaining quality. Last year in my speech, I spoke about plans to start fellowship training in the general specialty areas in regional hospitals. And we have been successful in this. I'd like to say a big thank you to the faculty chairs and secretaries who have been very tolerant with my railroading and basically wanting to do things yesterday which should be done tomorrow and have moved with me to accredit facilities and we have been successful in this expansion. I'm happy to inform you that fellowship training in pediatrics and obstetrics and gynecology was started at Techiman Holy Family Hospital in July this year. And their implants are well advanced for fellowship training to start at um, Eastern Regional Hospital, Koforidua, and Ifian Kwanta Hospital in Takradi in January. Our target is that each regional hospital in this country would have fellowship training in anesthesia, emergency medicine, family medicine, general surgery, obstetrics and gynecology, pediatrics, and internal medicine. So to the new fellows, there's a lot of work to be done. So this shouldn't be the last time that we see you in the activities of the college. If it is, we'll have an, an induction ceremony for all of you. Now, we do not have the full complement of these specialty areas in any of the three new training centers, but we'll continue to work towards this. As we talk about fellowship training starting at um, Holy Family Hospital in Techiman, I would like to congratulate the leadership of Konfanochi Teaching Hospital, KNUST School of Medicine and Dentistry, and our trainers from Konfanochi Hospital for making the opening of Techiman Holy Family Hospital for training successful. I suspect that most of the people here are from, are from the, other, the other teaching hospital, so they are not clapping loud enough. So let's, let's clap for the Konfanochi guys. <laughs> Now, the administration of Cape Coast Teaching Hospital, Kolibu Teaching Hospital, 37 Military Hospital, and Ridge Hospital, together with their trainers, have all signed on to ensure that the expansion to Takradi and Koforidua becomes a reality next year. So let's clap for them in advance. <laughs> with the opening of Eastern Regional Hospital and Ifian Kwanta Hospital, Ghana College of Physicians and Surgeons will have fellowship training going on in eight out of our regional 10 regions. We have our eyes firmly set on Upper East and Upper West regions where we are yet to start any training. And I'd like to assure the Ghana Health Service and CHAG that we, we are going to get there very soon. This, this decentralized fellowship training story will not be complete if we don't talk about the efforts of the, um, the Office of the Director General of the Ghana Health Service and the Executive Director of Christian Health Association of Ghana. These two institutions have really worked very hard. We've had, we've had meetings together, we've strategized together, and that has led to this decentralization of fellowship training. So we greatly appreciate the support of Ghana Health Service and Christian Health Association of Ghana in the decentralization of training efforts. As we decentralize our training, we need to ensure that trainees in all centers receive a common theoretical foundation that is provided by the best experts that we have. To achieve this, our college has embarked on a drive to record core lectures for all our specialties and to have these lectures on a learning management system so that trainees in any part of the country can access these lectures at their convenience. With the help of Tropical Health Education Trust UK, World Health Organization, Ghana Office, and AO Alliance, we have been able to procure the learning management system and have started uploading the video lectures. In addition to trainees accessing the lectures, the learning management system can also be used for posting of study materials, having discussion forums, and conducting assessments, among many other things. Over the next few months, this system would be launched, and both our trainees and trainers will be provided with access and help to make maximum use of this resource. Two years ago, our college joined the Consortium of Academic and Research Libraries in Ghana. And then we had, and a year ago, we had 
functional access to electronic journals and databases. It took us a little while to set up off-campus access such that trainees, trainers, and anybody connected to this system could access the electronic journals and databases from home without having to come into the college network. So early this year, we launched these electronic resources. We had an online program that we widely publicized and asked all, all um, trainees, members, and fellows to join. And there's a video on our college website that has a tutorial on, on how to use these electronic resources. So sitting from my office, I was convinced that everybody was using the resources and, and the college was, had moved into the 21st century. So I was very sad about two months ago when a colorectal surgeon from the US who had come to do some training here came to my office and said that residents had told her that in the 21st century in Ghana, trainees cannot have access to full text journal articles electronically. I don't know whether they were actually saying, saying that because that's what they believed or they thought that that was a posture that would lead to them having personal access to the databases in, in her university. So rather than her giving them some plenty money and saying subscribe to the Elsevier databases, she came to my office and said, how can you be superintending a training program in the 21st century where, there's, where the residents don't have access to electronic databases. So I went into full drive, whipped out my laptop, and downloaded some articles that she probably hadn't seen for her, and said it's available. The trainees are just not using it. So rather than just blame the trainees, my conclusion was that we had to be more proactive in advertising of these resources. So our ICT department has started contacting residents, members, and fellows about this resource again. All trainers, trainees, and other members and fellows who are in good standing are qualified to have access to this resource. So all of us here who are fellows and, and, and members of the college can have access to this, to this resource. So please check your emails and college WhatsApp platforms for instructions on being connected to this resource. This would happen over the next few months, and this would make teaching and learning more exciting so that we can tell people that we are really performing 21st century training. We have things that we, that we lack, but we shouldn't act as if there's nothing good about getting training out here. Let's make use of, of the things that we have and lift our own heads high. One of the mandates of our college is to promote research in medicine, surgery, and related disciplines. One way in which we have done this is to require all graduating fellows to perform independent research and produce a research dissertation. However, we have not been very successful in delivering formal research training to all our residents. With the support of the WHO country office, we have started modular basic research methods training for our trainees at the membership level and advanced research methods training for trainees at the fellowship level. The training is held in Accra and Kumasi for the fellowship trainees and in Accra, Kumasi and Tamale for the membership trainees. These courses are mandatory and would have to be passed by the residents before taking their final exams. I'm pleased to inform you that the response by our trainees has been excellent and the feedback that they gave about the courses have been really great and these courses have been going very well. So at this point, I'd like to applaud the efforts of the Vice Rector, Dr. Henry Lawson, and the team of trainers and administrators who have ensured that the courses are run, very, are run successfully. Our electronic logbook, the ePort, for tracking the clinical activities of residents has been launched. And there are training videos for trainers and trainees on our college website. The ePort is currently taking baby steps, and we are all working hard to get it to be fully matured so that we, we migrate fully to it and do away with the paper logbooks. The WhatsApp platforms will have regular updates on the efforts being made to make this fully functional. Now, as some of you might know, and as after this, all of you will know, 
Our college administration building has 30 guest rooms and a restaurant. The hospitality section of our college has, however, not been functional for some time now. Last year, November, we resumed renting out the auditorium and other meeting spaces. And with the approval of the college, college council, we have done some major renovation of the guest rooms. So in March of this year, we had a test run of our hospitality services. We hosted the Moroccan delegation for the Paralympic Games in March. They were very happy with our services. People from the embassy of Morocco came and, and said this was a great place. I mean, the only painful thing was that the Ghana um, what do you, amputee football team beat the Moroccan team in the final. And I was rooting for Morocco <laughs> because they were, the, they were the ones who were bringing money to the college. So with this feedback, we are ready to go fully commercial in January of 2024. During this AGSM week, the college officials who live outside Accra and some of the graduating doctors are being hosted here. You can, you can get to, um, what you call the feedback from them. Uh, I, haven't, I haven't rigged anything, but I'm sure they'll tell you that it's, it's good to stay here. So College Hotel will be officially reopened early next year to the general public and will have special and attractive rates for fellows and members of the college. Please advertise this and patronize our services when we open for business. This has been an anniversary year, and we have had many interesting activities. Even though the attendance at a number of these activities have not been as expected, we have been able to showcase our college and what we do, and this has led us to making a good number of new friends. To mark the 20th anniversary, we made a special appeal to raise funds to build two simulation centers to help modernize and improve the quality of resident training. We mentioned figures like um, two million US dollars and people went along with us. If that's his latest dream, let's, let's kind of like encourage him in dreaming about that. But the truth is that this appeal led to us making a valuable new friend. At the, at the Valco Trust. And I'm extremely happy to inform you that the Valco Trust has committed to putting up the first simulation center for us in Kumasi. <laughs> you see, this is the point where after the footballers score a goal, they stand and they do this. Because they can't hear. They can't hear. So you know the kind of celebration I would have done if I could play football, but I can't. I just like watching it. So we are very grateful to this support from the Valco Trust. We had a meeting with the, with the um, acting executive director of the Valco Trust yesterday, and our vice president for Division of Physicians made a statement. She, says, she said, I don't want to say that this is moving too fast. I mean, she was amazed at the speed with which things are moving in the simulation center. And if everything goes well, I'll cut the tip myself. <laughs> it will be done by another rector. So, 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 so we, we are really, we are really happy, happy about this, and you, you'll hear more as we go along and get to know our new friends in, in this area. Ghana College of Physicians and Surgeons has come a long way after 20 years, but there's still a lot of ground to cover. We have taken this year to critically examine where we are and make plans to attain greater heights in the years ahead. We have talked about the great people who have helped us to get here, and one of them is our guest of honor today, and you'll be hearing him soon. On the 12th of December at 6 p.m., the president of, of Ghana, His Excellency Nana Dudanko Akufuado, will join us to honor these heroes. Please, let us turn out in our numbers to applaud them. Let's turn out in our numbers and honor these heroes at this special ceremony in this auditorium. Let's not wait for the time that we like to go for things in large numbers, then we say that we are honoring them. I mean, who tells you that they are hearing it when you are honoring them at that time? So let's come when they are with us and let's honor them. Let's fill this auditorium and show our appreciation for the people who brought this college to, to this point. In conclusion, this has been a year in which we have seen the implementation of a number of the things we have been working on. It has also been a year in which we have discovered more things that we need to improve and others that we need to start working on. It has certainly been another year of great achievements 
and this has been due to our collective efforts. I would like to end by thanking the Honorable Minister and the Ministry of Health, our Governing Council, all our valued stakeholders and partners, members and fellows of the college, and the staff of the college administration for their contribution to all this. Long live Ghana College of Physicians and Surgeons. Long live Ghana. Thank you. Please, another round of applause for my rector. And then, because he mentioned my name, another round of applause for him. <laughs> right, we are uh, an agency under the Ministry of Health. Uh, our minister is not able to be with us, but we have the Deputy Minister of Health, who is also member of parliament for Daboya, Bankarigu constituency in the Savannah region of Ghana. He's in the person of Alaji Mohammed Asay Saini. Please, let's welcome him to give us an address. in the morning or in the afternoon. Good morning, beautiful people. Yes. Anytime I see professionals like this, I'm always happy <clears throat> because I know that we will live long. <laughs> Even though death has no substitute, life is important, but at least we shall die, but you will improve. We shall get some years to add to our years because of the professionalism that you bring in into this field. Clap for yourselves. And Ghana is proud of you. I say this, the Minister of Health is proud of you. And our parents, guardians are proud of you. This is an important day. Let us enjoy it. Chairman of the Council of Ghana College of Physicians, and surgeons, guests of honor, college lecturer, members of the college, members of the college council, president of Ghana College of Physicians and Surgeons, vice president of Ghana College of Physicians and Surgeons, rector, vice rector, faculty chairs and secretaries, other officers of the college past presidents of the college, past writers of the college, representatives of sister colleges, invited guests, graduating doctors, friends from the media, and who we can guess, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very happy to be here with you at this special 20th anniversary induction ceremony. Ghana College of Physicians and Surgeons has featured prominently in the, in the news this year with all the anniversary activities. I am certain that this, this has led to more people becoming aware of the great work that you are doing. This year, Ghana College of Physicians and Surgeons is inducting 300 and 35 doctors, which, are, which will result in 247 additional members of the college and 87 additional fellows. The number of specialists being turned out every year is very encouraging, and I commend the effort of all the trainers, internal and external examiners in achieving this. The Ministry of Health has continued to work closely with the, with the, with the college administration in order to, to achieve your vision of becoming the pioneer postgraduate medical college in Africa and beyond. This year, the college has begun implementing the policy changes that have reduced the waiting time 
between graduation from medical school and the start of postgraduate training. The college has also started the street fellowship training for selected priority specialists, as well as the street fellowship training for doctors who excel in the, mem in, in the, in the membership exams, examinations. These changes have been made possible due to the excellent working relationship among Ghana College of Physicians and Surgeons, Ghana Health Service, Christian Health Association of Ghana, and the teaching hospitals. I would like to commend the heads of these institutions for the continued collaborative effort to increase the number of specialists in the country and the quality of health care received by Ghanaians. I am certain that within the, within the next five years, we will see an increase in the number of fellows of the college working in Ghana Health Service, the CHAG hospitals in the country, so that the false idea that fellows are only needed in teaching hospitals and academic institutions will be removed from the minds of Ghanaians. As the government pursues the Agenda 1-1 project, there is a need for members and fellows of the college to staff these hospitals. The country will not gain anything by simply redistributing the existing doctors. So we need to work hard to increase the numbers at, at a rate that ensures that there will be members and fellows in the, in the major specialists in these hospitals. The need for specialists to be produced in such numbers that they can be redistributed around the country. The production of members and fellow, fellows of the college is closely tied to the training of doctors at the undergraduate level. Traditionally, the training of medical students has been under the Ministry of Education and the training of health specialists under the Ministry of Health. This separation, Mr. Chairman, this separation of responsibility has led to challenges with the recruitment of lecturers from the medical schools and the provision of clinical training sites for the medical students. These challenges have resulted in the overcrowding of training hospitals, which are the main sites for undergraduate and postgraduate medical training. When we were addressing the problem of overcrowding, whilst increasing numbers of medical students and specialists trained, is to get to the point where all regional hospitals and other HEFRA certified secondary level facilities serve as training sites for both undergraduates and postgraduates medical training. The specialist training, the, the specialist the specialist training the medical students will be both members and fellows of the college who are based in these secondary institution facilities. This dream, however, can only be achieved when we get to the point where members and fellows of the college who are involved in the training of medical students do, do not need to resign from Ghana Health Service, Chuck or the training uh, hospitals in order to become university lecturers. We need to identify a way to make, the, the, to make this work and I'm sure and I show you that the Minister of Health is open to the discussion on getting this to happen. And I'm, sh I'm sure that I can also say this on behalf of the Honorable Minister of Education. This thing will be resolved. One well, of the major bottlenecks to the increase in the number of medical students trained is the facilities for basic science training. Let us all begin, or begin to think about innovative ways to achieve this so that we can train enough medical students and then have them do their clinical, 
rotation in all the secondary level facilities in the country. <clears throat> I know that the Ghana College of Physicians and Surgeons is working hard to decentralize the fellowship training in all the general specialty areas, but I think I should add to your work by asking you to take the lead in starting the, the discussion on achieving these goals of medical students being present in all the places where your specialists are trained and also addressing the Ministry of Health and Education on how to address the peculiar issues of recruitment of lecturers for medical training. A human resource issue that we addressed in the new policy changes were the recruitment on post-retirement contract of fellows who are involved in training of specialists. These post-retirement contracts are meant mainly for fellows who have who would will support training outside the teaching hospitals. An over, overwhelming majority of fellows who attain the mandatory retirement age of 60 can continue to train specialists and provide services for many more years. The ministry is ready to work with the college and other agencies to come up with the details for how these post-retirement post contracts can be effected to enhance the effort of decentralization, decentralizing the trading. One challenge that the college always has to has is that of the funding of postgraduate training. I know that you have the exact figures for money that you are expecting to receive from government for this. I would like to say that government is fully committed to the funding of medical postgraduate training, and we are working hard to ensure that you receive all outstanding funds. Mr. Reta, anytime you are having problems about these funds, let us know from the ministry. We are members of, we are cabinet, my minister is cabinet minister. We will carry it out strongly, and I keep on, as I keep on telling uh, Minister of Health Workers and daughters like you, that the most important ministry, as far as I know in this world, is the health ministry everywhere. So make sure that you get your monies. Otherwise, we will not live long. Maybe so. <laughs> we, are, we are also working hard to get the appropriate policy documents in place so that this funding will not be dependent on the ruling government, but, Mr. Reuters, I'm going to repeat, we are also working hard to get the appropriate policy documents in place so that this funding will not be dependent on the ruling government, but will be part of the ongoing program of work for the country. So that you continue. Nobody should come and disconnect it because life must continue. You understand? No government should disconnect it because life must continue. And we'll do that exactly for you. I assure you that this policy for the final of postgraduate training will be finalized within the next few months. The Minister of Health continues to be proud of the contribution that Ghana College of Physicians and Surgeons is making to health service delivery and health policy in the country. Many of your members and fellows serve as important committees, serve as important committees on the Ministry of Health and Ghana Health Service, in addition to providing clinical specialist care in many parts of the country. The new members and fellows who are graduating this year have all put in a great deal of work and dealt with the challenges of relocation and other infrastructure and equipment related challenges in training. You are all here today because you have successfully handled these challenges and come out in flying colors. 
The Minister of Health congratulates you for this great achievement. We are also we also recognize the support that has been provided by your family members and friends in making this day a reality. While we are work, while we will, while we would like you to enjoy this moment too, to the fullest, it is important for you to realize that there are many people in the country who are looking up to you for specialist medical and surgical services. I am therefore calling on all, or calling on you all to provide the best services possible to all people who come under your care. It is also important for you to make sure that you keep up with development, development in your field of practice and provide the, provide the necessary technical advice to get our health delivery service to improve. Whilst I just say the last word, I'm, I'm also trying to draw your attention to the fact that I always say that uh, the memory of the dead is what is always a warning to the living. Long live Ghana College of Physicians. Or oh, you don't want her to live long. <laughs> so you should clap our hands for yourself that we should live long. Yes. So long live Ghana College of Physicians and Surgeons and long live our country, Ghana. And long live me. <laughs> me <too. laughs> uh, thank you very much, Alaji Saini. Um, we still have another lecture coming up. So my can we just stand, um, just stand uh, for a second or two, and then we sit down again. We can all sit now. Thank you very much. Right. So we now move to the college lecture. Now, uh, for the last two years, we haven't had the college lecture during the uh, induction ceremony because we had two separate programs on the same day. So we pushed the uh, college lecture to Thursday to join the scientific sessions. But this year, we, we've brought it back. So the speaker's profile is on page 104, but I'm going to summarize it for you. The one there is a bit long, so I'm trying to summarize it for you. Um, our speak college lecture is a gentleman from the central region of Ghana. He's strong-voiced, but soft-spoken. He has a stern demeanor, but always wearing a smile. He is an alumnus of Fijai Secondary School, Second D, and University of Ghana Medical School. He embraced a career in female pelvic intricacies. <laughs> Uniquely, he was one of the few doctors who returned to Ghana immediately after completion of his postgraduate training. In fact, the year he came, he came because my wife was pregnant, and he, he, my wife needed an international gynecologist, so that's why he came. <laughs> He returned to UGMS as a lecturer and rose through the ranks to become an associate professor and vice dean in charge of medical education. He has been an inspiration and a mentor for generations of medical students and residents through the Christian Medical Fellowship over the years, providing instruction and guidance on various career and life-changing issues among young Christian doctors in Ghana. He is the board chairman of the, for International Needs, an NGO focused on child rights, education, health, gender and empowerment, and Christian witness. He is a practicing Methodist. He is a sought-after consultant for accreditation of facilities 
and medical programs from undergraduate physician assistant programs to postgraduate training of doctors across the country. He's a fellow of the West Africa College of Surgeons in Obstetrics and Gynecology. He's a foundation fellow of the Ghana College of Physicians and Surgeons in the Faculty of Obstetrics and Gynecology. He's a fellow of the Royal College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists of the United Kingdom. He has worked on the faculty board of the Faculty of Obstetrics and Gynecology of Ghana College of Physicians and Surgeons, the Education and Research Committee, the Academic Board, and he's the longest serving chief examiner for the Ghana College of Physicians and Surgeons. Please join me to welcome our college lecturer for the 20th anniversary AGSM, Professor Kobina Nchechel. Thank you very much, Vice Rector. I'm sure you can tell from, from the brief profile written in the program's book that what he said is far, far longer than what I have put down there. I was going to say that I am very happy that the Vice Rector and MC set the protocol for us because it's one of the things I dread doing for fear that I might miss out some very important names. But all the same, Chairman of Council and Deputy Minister of Health and all protocols observed. I must begin by expressing sincerest gratitude to the college for the opportunity and privilege to deliver this year's college lecture. I do really feel honored to be delivering the annual lecture, especially that it commemorates the 20th anniversary of the establishment of this college. The college has to a large extent been successful in achieving the objectives for which it was established. It has produced many specialists in the membership and fellowship levels who are providing critical specialist medical care at the various levels of healthcare in the country. It continues to provide continuous professional development programs to enable members and fellows keep up to date with developments in their areas of specialization. These successes are want to create a sense of complacency which if unchecked could result in our being comfortable with mediocrity and can have a negative impact on the college's standing. It is in this respect that I have chosen for our short, short discourse this morning the theme, Pursuit of Excellence in Postgraduate Medical Training in Ghana, Challenges of the Next 20 Years. Someone has said that success and excellence may sound anonymous, sorry, may sound synonymous but there is an important distinction. Success is generally a finite game. You set a goal, you hit it, and you are then left to wonder what's next. Whereas the pursuit of excellence is an infinite game. It will keep you focused on growing, getting better, and achieving your greatest potential. In the college's statement of its core values, the following six attributes are mentioned. Integrity, collaboration, professionalism, evidence-based decision-making, innovation, and excellence. I am of the view that the first five can be subsumed under the sixth one, excellence, the pursuit of excellence. It is in the avowed pursuit of excellence that we would stay focused on the demonstration of the other desired attributes. Achieving excellence requires a mindset which focuses on a purpose and this purpose has been clearly defined in the vision of the college. Our goal is to be the premier postgraduate medical college in Africa and beyond. This is a hard ask and will take determination, hard work, and willingness to confront and battle what may look like insurmountable obstacles. The mission statement of the college further elucidates the purpose to continuously enhance healthcare delivery through ethical and technology leveraged training 
to produce highly skilled specialist doctors who are committed to lifelong learning, promotion of research, and health policy development and advocacy to meet the healthcare needs of Ghana and the sub-region. It is therefore clear that the pursuit of excellence is an imperative imposed by the vision and mission statements of the college. In the pursuit of excellence, obstacles are seen as opportunities to better oneself. They are not considered as indicating the dead end of the road. It is not possible in the time available to discuss every aspect of what may be considered relevant issues under this theme. I have therefore selected a few areas to, a few areas to share some thoughts on. And these are areas I have selected on my own. First is postgraduate medical education. The college is essentially an institution for postgraduate medical education. It will therefore be most desirable if it establishes a reputation as an institution that strongly promotes the application of sound principles of pedagogy in its training programs. Let me mention in passing that in current convention, the use of the term medical education has been replaced with health professions education. And this is to reflect the different health professions, the training of whose members may be integrated to indicate the reality of cooperation required among the said professions in effective healthcare delivery. The college has been making efforts to equip its trainers with some skills in education. For example, workshops have been organized to enable trainers set appropriate multiple choice questions. Sessions have been held to help trainers become effective mentors However, it is my view that a lot more can be done. It would be most helpful if current literature on health professions education is regularly scanned to determine tried and tested innovations that may be introduced into our training methodologies. Our trainers should be equipped with skills in curriculum development and revision, the various modalities of teaching and learning, both the theoretical and practical aspects, and assessment of trainees' learning. May I suggest that perhaps a health professions education unit or department needs to be established in the college to oversee these activities. The unit would also pursue research, especially in postgraduate medical training in Ghana, and contribute to the literature on the subject. It will provide scientifically sound information that advances and promotes education in the health professions. This unit would have to be manned by highly qualified individuals with experience in health professions education. The word doctor derives from the Latin word docere, which means to teach. Each of our trainees should therefore be willing and able to teach and train doctors, medical students, and other healthcare staff. This is very important for the maintenance of quality of care in the future. We have to admit that in most instances, fellows would have had no formal sessions on how to go about teaching and training. The suggested Health Professions Education Unit could organize relevant workshops based on carefully designed curricula for trainees, members, and fellows of the college to make them effective teachers and trainers. It may include topics such as principles of education as applied to medicine, practical teaching skills, audit and peer review of one's teaching, use of formative assessment for the benefit of the student or trainee, and formal appraisal of progress or performance and feedback. Such workshops may not be considered mandatory for graduation, though every encouragement will be given for individuals to take advantage of them. Needless to say, this development would eventually prove beneficial not only to the college, but to the medical schools as well, since it will lead to improvements in the quality of teaching and the experience of learning. Through the Health Pro Professions Education Unit, there could be collaboration with the colleges of pharmacists and of nursing and midwifery to enhance teaching and learning practices to the benefit of all the colleges. Research in the college's training program, a major purpose of postgraduate medical training is to improve the health of the people and to develop new knowledge and innovations for medical practice. The vital role of research in achieving these goals cannot be overemphasized. 
and the college has firmly established this in the requirement for research into and submission of a dissertation on a, on a chosen subject as a necessary requirement for fellowship graduation. In pursuit of the goal of improving the research skills of trainees, the college organizes courses for them, such as the basic research methods, advanced research methods, diploma in project management and design, and the systematic review and meta-analysis courses. The primary objective is to adequately prepare trainees to conduct studies and write their dissertations. In recent times, workshops have also been held to, for trainers in order to sharpen their skills in supervising trainees' research work. Trainees may find the experience of research gives them a very good insight into the use of statistics and other research methodologies and an understanding of how science influences clinical practice. A research project can be the impetus to proceed down a particular training pathway and to develop an area of particular interest as a specialist. Research need not be seen as being solely for those in academia. Engaging in research should be a cultural imperative for graduates of the college. Trainees should be made to see research not as an unnecessary impediment in their way of becoming a fellow, and which may be jettisoned after completion of training, but rather as an essential element to continued good clinical practice and professional development. The vision should be that of fellows becoming leading researchers in our academic and health institutions with increasing number of publications of in, in high impact journals. Let me at this point congratulate the college for instituting an award to enable graduates publish manuscripts from their dissertations in peer reviewed journals. Consideration should be given to equipping trainees and fellows with skills in grantsmanship to enhance their abilities to source funding for their research endeavors. These skills will prove of considerable benefit to the individuals in their academic advancement as well as to the standing of any institution they will be part of. Talking about research brings into focus the planned integration of the college's fellowship program with a PhD program for those who so desire it. Something that I personally am in favor of. The college has been in talks with three public universities to work out the modalities of implementing such a program. Although this development has unfortunately been occasioned by the unnecessary argument over the place of clinical fellowship qualifications in top university appointment, appointments, it is not by any means an, ad, an admission of any inherent shortcomings in the fellowships. Indeed, the fellowship has no such shortcomings, and I would encourage the college to continue with its engagement with the powers that be to bring about program, to bring about appropriate recognition. Hopefully, while awaiting such recognition, having our graduates obtain a PhD will save them the trouble of having to contend with potentially distracting influences which may want to jeopardize their deserved progress in academia. The use of technology. The college has come a very long way in the use of technology, technology specifically information and communication technology, technology in its activities. I remember very well how in the beginning we used to mark our MCQs by hand. This being made possible because candidate numbers were small. We then moved to using the marking machines at the University of Ghana Medical School, later acquired our own machine, and now we use computer-based testing system which marks and provides candidate marks almost instantaneously. It may be mentioned that other examination bodies are using our CBT facilities. As a result of the, COVID, the consequences of the COVID pandemic, we, we use Zoom now not only for committee meetings, but also for interviews for admissions of new residents and in continuing professional development activities. We are able by Zoom to use the services of external examiners from as far afield as New Zealand. The field of information technology continues to advance quite rapidly, and the college will do well to keep up with it in its quest for excellence. 
The latest is artificial intelligence, AI for short, and emerging technologies which seem to offer almost limitless opportunities for its use in various fields of endeavor. Applications of AI in learning, instruction, and assessment are growing. Artificial intelligence can play a significant role in postgraduate medical education, enhancing the learning experience and improving clinical decision making and providing valuable tools for training such as in data analysis and research and assessment and evaluation. AI driven tools can identify trainees strengths and weaknesses enabling the development of customized learning plans that target, target specific areas for improvement. New approaches in medical education that improve the digital literacy of physicians are crucial. AI and digital technologies are becoming fundamental to the practice of medicine. To continue to meet patient needs, physicians will need a basic understanding of the available technologies. And digital health literacy competencies should be integrated into the college's curricula. Future physicians will be impacted by the development of AI and emerging technologies in many ways. They will need to be highly adapted to the emerging technologies and be able to use and interpret them in their practice for the benefit of their patients. They should understand the fundamentals of how it works appreciate opportunities for its use, and recognize its limitations to translate its meaning when interacting with other health professionals and with patients. Working with appropriate specialists, the college can develop guidelines and principles for integrating the teaching of AI and emerging dig digital technologies across all postgraduate medical training programs, and incorporate these teaching programs as a component of continuous professional development for current members or fellows. Although experts agree machines will not replace physicians, machines would significantly change what a physician does every day. Someone has said that machines will not replace physicians, but physicians using AI may soon replace those not using it. The college should examine how best to apply AI to support elements of its operation, particularly in relation to its role as an examining body. Number of training centers. When the college started their training, when the college started training uh, doctors, the centers used were only the Kolebu Teaching Hospital and the Konfano Teaching Hospital. Over the past 20 years, several other centers have been accredited for training, either in part or in whole. Considering the number of doctors currently undergoing postgraduate training, it is manifestly clear that more and more training centers are urgently required. While various options are being considered, it may be suggested that plans be put in place to elevate regional hospitals into teaching hospitals. And I mean real teaching hospitals. This requires establishing the appropriate supporting legal frameworks and providing the relevant human and material capital will be fitting such elevations. Such hospitals may be teaching hospitals not because they provide undergraduate, but rather postgraduate medical training. And it should be within the plan to, in future, affiliate these teaching hospitals to universities and medical schools for undergraduate medical training. Let me take this opportunity while talking about the issue of expansion in the numbers of training centers to draw attention to the need for the establishment of a high fidelity simulation centers for our postgraduate medical training. Simulation is a generic term that refers to an artificial representation of a real world process to achieve educational goals through experiential training. There are several advantages to the use of simulation, including avoidance of risks to patients, planning clinical cases based on trainees' needs rather than avail availability of patients, and opportunities for repeated practice until proficiency is achieved. Simulation facilities, especially high-fidelity ones, are very expensive, 
and I want to lend my full support to the college's plans to establish two simulation centers in the country at estimated cost of $2 million. And I'm very pleased to hear that uh, the VACO Trust Fund is willing and ready to build one for the northern part of the country. I would appeal to individuals, organizations, and corporate bodies to generously give towards helping the college realize this dream, which will help in no small measure to keep the college on course in its pursuit of excellence in postgraduate medical training. Let me mention the threat of brain drain. The issue of brain drain of doctors has been with us for many years. A few years after the college started operations, there was evidence that considerable reduction in this phenomenon had taken place. Unfortunately, in, in recent times, there have been concerns expressed over the resurgence of brain drain of doctors from the country. In September 2017, the then Deputy Executive Director at Christian Health Association of Ghana wrote an open memo to the Minister of Health in which he bemoaned the long waiting periods doctors who had completed house jobs were being subjected to before appointment as medical officers. He indicated that this was fueling brain drain of these medical officers to other African countries, and he proffered some solutions to that particular problem which we wouldn't go into here. But in May 2022, January 2023, and November 2023, there were news items in which officials of the Ghana Medical Association indicated that doctors were leaving the country in droves. The situation was attributed to poor working conditions and the difficult economic conditions in the country. In, in July 2023, this year, a very prominent traditional ruler speaking at a retreat for medical superintendents expressed concern over the brain drain of medical personnel and the devastating consequences this would have on the nation's health system. In another, in another news item in August this year, the Ghana Health Service as much as admitted that brain drain of doctors was a problem and that, it, that the service was taking steps to address it. The problem of brain drain of doctors can become a huge challenge to the college. What is happening now may be a trickle, but should it develop into a torrent, it would pose an existential threat to the college. I am reminded of the situation in the country in the late 1970s and early 1980s, during which not only young doctors, but experienced consultants and professors left the country for greener pastures because of the prevailing unbearable economic conditions. If care is not taken, we may get to the situation in which there may neither be applicants to be trained nor teachers to train them. I sincerely hope and pray that we don't get there. The college, unfortunately, is not in a position to do much about the economic situation. It can only play an advocacy role, pleading for resource allocation to keep the health system going, in order to, to keep the health system going, uh, and to enable it contribute its part by appropriately training those who qualify. I want to end my brief talk by, you know with a tribute and an acknowledgement, because I cannot end this lecture without paying a tribute to many individuals and groups for the contributions they have made to make the college what it is today. To those who mooted the idea to establish the Ghana College of Physicians and Surgeons and moved the powers that be to come along with them. The government and people of Ghana who shared the vision and provided the material resources with which to establish the college and cooperated to keep the college going well. A special mention is made of the government of President Kufo, during whose tenure the college was officially established and who gifted the college this present premises.
We make mention of past and present chairpersons and councils of the college who have provided guidance to ensure that the college stayed true to its mandate. Present presidents and vice presidents who have been skillful in putting the college on the right pedestal. Vice rectors, vice rectors and executive councils and academic boards who have provided sterling leadership and brought about innovations to keep the college relevant. Faculty chairpersons and faculty boards who have worked assiduously to ensure smooth running of our academic programs. Trainers who have sacrificed a lot to ensure that our specialists are adequately trained. And who have shown confidence in the college's training programs, sorry, uh, I beg your pardon, trainees who have shown confidence in the college's training programs and have enthusiastically gone through them. Internal and external examiners who have ensured the attainment of international standards in our examinations. The administrative staff who have provided invaluable behind the scenes support to ensure smooth running of the college. All fellows and members of the college for their continued support to make the college stand up and stand tall and high, not only in our sub-region, but throughout the world. Past and present international collaborators who have worked together with us to enable us achieve our goals. I'm convinced that Contributions made by all the above have resulted in the college being built on such solid foundations that it can withstand all challenges, even those of seismic proportions. Let me, in ending, quote here a statement attributed to Aristotle. Excellence is never an accident. It is the result of high intention, sincere effort, intelligent direction, skillful execution, and the vision to see obstacles as opportunities. God bless the Ghana College of Physicians and Surgeons and enable it advance in excellence. God bless our homeland Ghana and make her great and strong. Long live the Ghana College of Physicians and Surgeons. Long live our nation Ghana. And I thank you most sincerely for your attention. <laughs> Professor Kobina Nchecha, thank you very much. MOH Kwa. It's time for you to give us an interlude before our guest of honor speaks to us.
was nodding his head. So <laughs> this, this, this is really, really, really good. Thank you so much, M. Wishkwa. There's one song that the president likes and I also like. So maybe when we close, you add it. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, that's the one that didn't come. So once the president likes it and I like it, you, you will bring it up. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, to introduce the guest of honor, where, where do I start from? Uh, this year, he has received so many citations and awards, uh, but I still have to say something. I would say that he successfully climbed the eighth floor of life three years ago. Now, when it comes to hostel management, he made a mark as medical administrator at Kolibu Teaching Hospital and also was strategic in the establishment of Coco Clinic. When you consider a path after medical school, he trained in distinguished institutions from Ibadan to Lagos to London to become one of the earliest Ghanaian neurologists. In the area of medical regulation, he is the only person in Ghana to be chairman of the Medical and Dental Council twice. For postgraduate medical education in Ghana, he has been a beacon, and we can now safely say that is now an icon. In his own words, he says he has strived to become a physician, a teacher, and a builder. Ladies and gentlemen, join me to welcome our guest of honor, Professor oh. Professor Paul Kwame Nyami. Please, louder, louder clap, louder, 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 louder. Mr. Chairman, Deputy Minister, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I am honored and privileged to be the guest of honor at this induction ceremony as part of the celebration of the 20th anniversary of the college. I was positioned to witness the seeding, gestation, and delivery of the college. And therefore, I'm truly grateful for the opportunity to participate in today's and other events of the celebrations. The practitioners being inducted today as fellows of the college have attained the highest rank of the status in the college. The special induction is in recognition that each of you have reached that height, not by sudden flight, but by toil of body, heart, and mind, through strenuous academic and clinical work. I congratulate you all. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, the mandate of the college covers the training of specialists, continuous professional development, research in medicines, surgery, and related disciplines, and contribution to public health policies. The various levels of membership of the college have been educated, trained, and acquired skills to deliver this mandate through service, teaching, research, and advocacy. It is to be expected that all, but especially the fellows, show willingness to give service in any part of the country where their enhanced expertise is needed. They should be dedicated to life of service, not privilege. Our regional hospitals and district hospitals need to be revitalized through rehabilitation and retooling to be fit for purpose of specialist service. The presence of specialists in these hospitals should bring some comfort, assurance, and relief to our folk who are living far away from the urban areas. I learned that the college is making steady progress 
in cooperation with the Ghana Health Service to empower some hospitals besides the teaching hospitals to participate in the training of doctors. Techim and Holy Family Hospital is a shining example of how a faith-based non-governmental hospital is organized and disciplined to provide the teaching and training for pre-registration and postgraduate doctors. The decentralization policy of the college will not come on, it won't succeed if fellows are not prepared to serve outside the teaching hospitals. In the area of research in medicine, surgery, and allied disciplines could be a challenge for clinicians. This is because of long hours of clinical work and for many, additional teaching responsibilities, committee, and administrative load. There needs to be a system to recruit and train clinicians to be researchers. Perhaps GTEC, the scholarship secretariat, and the universities, which have been keen or who have a keen interest in PhDs who will headhunt for young medical and dental graduates to be sponsored for training as potential researchers. And even for those with the fellowship, it must not be, it must not be the end of learning. Education is not about the feeling of a pill, but the lighting of a fire. So said William Yeats. So do take up the challenge to acquire further academic and professional qualification if you get the opportunity. Ladies and gentlemen, medicine in the 21st century is operating in vistas, fed and informed by the modern sciences, technology, computer science, and unavoidably artificial intelligence. There are new techniques and sub-specialties. The leadership of the college have the commendable strategies to encourage further training in, the, in these specialties and sub-specialties that are seriously undersubscribed or underpopulated, or indeed in some cases unpopulated. They beckon the membership holders to aim high beyond their current station because Ghana needs them. My dear fellows and members, the specialists from this college must be motivated by the spirit of service and identification with the community. President John F. Kennedy said, and I quote, the educated citizen has an obligation to serve the public he may be a precinct worker or president. He may give his talent at the courthouse, the state house, White House. He may be a civil servant or senator, a candidate or campaign worker, winner or a loser, but he must be a participant and not a spectator. The 20th anniversary celebration should energize all doctors who should be imbued with a new vision of citizenship. The college is enjoined under its mandate to contribute to the formulation of policies on sound health and public health generally. The pernicious occupation of illegal surface mining, or Galamse, is a public health issue. Galamse is destructive. It destroys our forests. The rivers are polluted. Byproducts of their processing are causing chronic, disease, chronic uh, kidney diseases, malformed babies, and possibly malignancies. The AGSM of the college must be heard and counted on this issue. Clinicians, <laughs> and clinicians, Clinicians must aim at being truly expert clinicians. William Osler, the great Canadian physician said, there are only two kinds of doctors, those who practice with their brains and those who practice with their tongues. But, as we, but even as we endeavor to be cerebral clinicians, we should remember Sir Theodore Fox, the British physician and medical editor who said, the doctor has learned about diseases, 
but he is and must always be a human being devoted first to human beings. So train to be good managers, organizational experts, and leaders. Acquire the capacity for policy analysis to enable doctors scrutinize public policies in the interests of our communities. Let us do our duty in the service of Ghana and humanity. Ladies and gentlemen, we are in a celebratory mood, and it should be appropriate to extend compliments and acknowledgments. I congratulate the progenitors and supporters of the vision for a national college. They have been vindicated. We are grateful to the, pol to the policy makers and members of parliament who place their trust and confidence in the enterprise. Various sectors of the public services and were cooperative and helpful throughout the early stages and deserve our gratitude. The College Council was supportive and assuring in difficult times. Thanks are due to all the faculties and their heads for their tolerance and cooperation, especially when sacrifices had to be made. And to the staff of the college who had to cope with a new culture of work, I say thank you. Are you cool? They delivered when they were needed. I congratulate the new members who were inducted yesterday on their new status as specialists. But while they accept the accolades, they must accept also the academic and professional challenges ahead. I congratulate you, the new fellows, for your industry and your achievement. It is now time to be leaders in the new vision. Finally, I congratulate the college for keeping the flag flying, the dream burning, and the sterling performance over the past two decades shining. Wear the badge of service on your sleeves. There is more to be done. Long live the Ghana College of Physicians and Surgeons. Long live Ghana, and thank you. Thank you very much, Prof. Nyami. Um, Prof. Nyami has written a book on the, um, the journey to establishing this college. The book is titled First Steps. It is available uh, in the atrium or the reception of the college if you like a copy. Uh, some of the things he's saying and uh, challenges in the beginning, acceptance of the whole you know, idea and what they went through to establish that all that is captured in that book. It's, it's very good reading, if, um, especially for the fellows. If you're a member of this college, you should have one and know uh, how all this went. All right, so for the um, family, friends, spouses that are here, it's now your turn. It is time to um, give our fellows their due. And so I will invite the rector, Professor Richard Dadanu, to take over from here. Oh, please clap for him. Thank you. Okay. So, we could see the ceremony is over now. Eh? And uh, I'm sure those graduating would, would stone me. So, we've reached the climax of things, and we are going to have the fellows by election and then the fellows by examination. By the authority of council, I present to you college president, the following, who possess in recognized postgraduate qualifications have, through professional competence, accomplishment and research, and on the recommendation of the relevant faculties and the academic board, have been elected for the award of fellow of the Ghana College of Physicians and Surgeons. They are from the Division of Physicians, Child Health, Dr. Adjoa Pukwa Bwachi Yadom. 
Dr. John Adebi Apia, Dr. Kwabna Onwona Ajiman, Dr. Laku Domenyo Owusu, Dr. Mami, Am Mami Enima Atubra Safo, Dr. Marie Charlene Kilber, Dr. Nana Ayua Rekubrobi, Dr. Nicholas Ajay, Dr. Taiba Jibril Afa, Dr. Yaninga Halawani Fuseni, Internal Medicine, Dr. Mark Young Siade, Dr. Norman Dattel, Dr. Salome Bando, Dr. Yao Oforeje, Professor Patrick Ajay, Public Health, Dr. Fred Adumakubwating, Dr. Nyonuku Akusia Badu, Dr. Patrick Kuma Abwaji, <laughs> Professor em em Emilia Asuko Udofia, <laughs> Radiology, Oncology, and Radiotherapy, Dr. Alfred Otu Ankara. Division of Surgeons, Anesthesia, Dr. Ama Pokwa Sapong, Dental Surgery, Dr. Mamta Thandani, Obstetrics and Gynecology, Dr. Alexander K. Omari Eboa. Dr. David Zawumia Kobila. Dr. Kwabna Apia Sechi. Dr. Samuel Kwame Amwaku Esrifi. Prof. Kwame Edubon Safo. Orth orthopedic and Trauma Surgery. Dr. Angbo Asari, Dr. Arthur Odote Sakifio, Dr. Daniel Tetebadu, Otto Rhino Laryngology, Dr. Magdiel Rodriguez Labrada. Surgery, Dr. Alfred Kofitete. <laughs> Dr. Ambi Nanesi Obing. <laughs> Dr. Antoinette Bediakubowan. <laughs> Dr. Henry Atawra. Dr. Kwaku Emil Tano. <laughs> Dr. Kojo Poku Yanki. <laughs> Dr. Kweku Ofea Sari. <laughs> Dr. Kwami Osai Daku. Dr. Ramirez Kalas Ramon Andre. College President. Thank you.
by the authority vested in me as the president of the Ghana College of Physicians and Surgeons, I confer on you the fellowship of the college in your specialties with all the privileges and responsibilities. Congratulations. So we'll now say the college pledge. So please say after me, I, I. Uh, <laughs> this, 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 this is not fellowship standard. So, so we'll start it again. And um, your families want to hear your names. So let's, let, let's start again. I, I, upon my honor, pledge to faithfully observe and obey the laws and regulations of the Ghana College of Physicians and Surgeons. I pledge to promote the highest ethical practice and professionalism. I pledge to constantly upgrade my knowledge and skill and pass these on to future generations through teaching of students and health professionals. I pledge to promote the general health of society through advocacy. Through this pledge, I promise to maintain and faithfully defend the honor, dignity, and good name of the Ghana College of Physicians and Surgeons. So help me God. So let's put on the Tudor bonnets in the, in the right way. Put on the Tudor bonnets. Yeah. And then please come up. Now we'll move on to the fellows by examination.
Okay, I think we can go now. By the authority of council, I present to you, college president, the following who have undergone senior residency training in an accredited institution and have also passed the examinations prescribed by the respective faculties. You may please confer on them the award of Fellow of the Ghana College of Physicians and Surgeons. From the Division of Physicians, Child Health, Dr. Claudia Ajasai. Dr. Eugenia Slymore. Dr. Ishmael Turi. Dr. Lanis Kamara. Dr. Lily Gloria Tego. And Dr. William Obing. Family Medicine, Dr. Baba Nina Damoa. Dr. Gertrude Aquahagen. Dr. Gordon Kwesi Ampuma Amu. Internal Medicine. Dr. Kosia Bobisafo. <laughs> Dr. Richard Sylvester Day. <laughs> Laboratory Medicine. Dr. Nana Jewa Iuku. <laughs> and Dr. William Gani. <laughs> Radiology. Dr. Harold Nixon. <laughs> Division of Surgeons. Anesthesia. Dr. Beauty Nayale Anan. <laughs> Dr. Grace Imelda Obingaji. <laughs> Dr. Lorraine Bafoywa. Dr. Na Mateko Vanderpoy. And Dr. Ousu Setre Dansu. Dental Surgery. Dr. Gabriel Victor Katempi. Dr. Nana Frimpoma Eduampoma. Dr. Regina Pobi. Dr. Ruby Yayura Goka. Dr. Sylvester Ousu. Dr. Stephen Eko Anku. Emergency Medicine, Dr. Hussein Alaji Yakubu. <laughs> Obstetrics and Gynecology, Dr. Ibrahim Babatua Mutitiga. <laughs> Dr. Alex Kodibuating. Dr. Ad, Dr. Andrew Vomao. Dr. Charles Edutechi. Dr. Ismond Ofori. Dr. Hawa Malechi. Dr. Jeff Osei Ajepong. Dr. Kweku Dufo Dapa, Dr. Michael Yao Amu, Dr. Ope Kwafu Adakwa, 
Dr. Patrick Enum, Dr. Paul Aduma Kumensa, Dr. Perez Sapenu, Dr. Theresa Abba Mensa, and Dr. Timothy Ajay. Orthopedic and Trauma Surgery, Dr. Kwejo Ening Ebu. Dr. Asari Anyemedu. Dr. Mohamed Issa Bukhari. Otto Rhino Laryngology. Dr. Mauto Jogwefia. Surgery, Dr. Dr. Kwejo Adeya Boaji. And Dr. Nathaniel Tete. By the authority in me vested as the president of the Ghana College of Physicians and Surgeons, I confer on you the fellowship of the college in your specialties with all the privileges and responsibilities. Congratulations. So now please say after me, I, I upon my honor pledge to faithfully observe and obey the laws and regulations of the Ghana College of Physicians and Surgeons. I pledge to promote the highest ethical practice and professionalism. I pledge to constantly upgrade my knowledge and skill and pass these on to future generations through teaching of students and health professionals. I pledge to promote the general health of society through advocacy. Through this pledge, I promise to maintain and faithfully defend the honor, dignity, and good name of the Ghana College of Physicians and Surgeons. So help me God. Congratulations. So let's get the Tudor bonnets on.
finally, we have four, four, four fellows of the Faculty of Surgery and Subspecialty, who, Faculty of, Gen, of Surgery and Subspecialties, who have um, pursued post-fellowship training and are being awarded the post-fellowship diploma in selected disciplines. So post-fellowship diploma in hand surgery, Dr. Emil Tano. Post-fellowship diploma in spine surgery, Dr. Arthur Odote Sakifio. Yes, come. come. Post-fellowship diploma in vascular surgery, Dr. Anita Esinam Agbeku. And also post-fellowship post diploma in vascular surgery, Dr. Jo Dr. Joachim Kweku Amuaku. So a final round of applause for all our graduates. I, I, I will not bring them out, but there was a husband and wife that graduated. All right, there was a husband and wife. And we also had Director General also graduating. Please, a round of applause again for them. This is epic. All right, so we've come to the end of proceedings. We'll invite council chair to close the induction ceremony. Please, let's welcome him. Congratulations again. Normally, I'm not required to make any speech at this, but I just want to make one remark. The minister made a lot of promises, and we'll hold, we'll hold him to it. Concerning our financial sustainability, we'll hold you to it. And on this note, I, Professor Yao Adijemfi, by authority vested in me, as chairman of, of the Council of the Ghana College of Physicians and Surgeons, declare this assembly closed. Uh, we will now invite Dr. Farida Gali, who is a consultant pediatric surgeon from Fanochi Teaching Hospital, an award winner in the college, to give us a vote of thanks. Let's welcome her. Standing on the already established protocol, distinguished guests, we thank the Almighty God for giving us this day. On behalf of the Ghana College of Physicians and Surgeons, I express my profound gratitude to our esteemed guests for gracing us with, it, with your presence. To the Deputy Minister of Health, Honorable Mahama Asei Saini, thank you for taking time off your busy schedule to be part of this occasion. Thank you for working to ensure funds come to the college on time and with, with this release becoming part of routine program of work. This is very heartwarming news to us. For this and more, we wish you a very, very, very long and healthy life. 
to Prof. Corbinine Churchill. Thank you for sharing with us your unique insight and perspective on excellence in medical practice in this year's college lecture. To our guest of honor, Prof. Paul Kwaminyame, an icon worth emulating, thank you for your kind and wise words. We are truly inspired. To all the other speakers, we appreciate your thought-provoking words and encouragement at this significant occasion. Your time and participation have added immense value to the program, uplifting us all. To the newly inducted fellows and awardees, the next generation of great and famous men who will be named in stories. Once again, we say congratulations. We are very proud of you all. Special thanks to the team that organized this beautiful ceremony, our sponsors, and everyone who con contributed in diverse ways to making this occasion memorable. We say thank you for your support and collaboration. Thank you, and God bless you all. For our closing prayer, we have Dr. Vera Bayou. She's a consultant ophthalmologist at Kolibu Teaching Hospital. Let's welcome her, please. As the thing is closing, the clapping is getting weaker. <laughs> Thank you. Can we please, with all humility, rise to our feet for the closing prayer? And with our heads bowed and being in the mood of prayer, shall we pray? Our Lord and our God, we thank you for this glorious day. Thank you for bringing us to the end of a successful induction ceremony of new fellows of the Ghana College of Physicians and Surgeons. We thank you for 20 years of the existence of the college. We thank you for the founding fathers and the impact this college has had on this nation. We pray for the abundance of your grace and strength to achieve more in the coming years. We thank you for the rector and all in leadership at the college. Guide them and use them as vessels to improve healthcare in Ghana by optimizing medical specialty training. Dear Lord, bless each graduate and new fellow with strength to face uncharted waters, wisdom to make sound decisions, and compassion that positively impacts society. And Lord, please prosper them financially and in all other aspects in this land, finally, we pray for traveling mercies for all who have traveled far and near back to our various homes. We pray for the rest of the college programs that they will be successful. May your presence continue to be with us and bless us all. In Jesus' name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Uh, please be seated, take a few announcements before we go. Uh, first of all, uh, we will have a group photograph with all the fellows uh, who have graduated um, when we step out on the steps. Um, secondly, we are, ex we are expecting all the fellows at the dinner tonight at uh, Marriott Hotel, so we'll be looking forward to seeing you there. And then we will recess in reverse order. So this time the uh, dignitaries will leave first before the fellows and then the rest of us can leave. All right, thank you very much. Uh, MOH, can we have some uh, soft music as we go out? Thank you. <laughs> 